Praise God. Welcome to Monday Night Study the Word. We're going to get into the last part of uh, the book of Revelation. We were in the, um, we'll be in chapter 19, verse 1 is where we're going to start in our, our reading of the Word. So this is the, uh, the, um, the sixth vision, and the, so we're going to go from that into the seventh of the book of Revelation. So if you want to get, uh, open up your word and join with me, we'll begin to read that. So chapter 19, verse 1, it says, After these things I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven, saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are your judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who, who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his, of his serv servants shed by her. And so well, last week we went through that, who the harlot was, and uh, it has to do with that, that trinity doctrine that uh, comes out of Babylon, that is Babylonian worship, okay? So... Uh, Let's read here, verse three, 3, again they said, Alleluia, her smoke rises up forever and ever, and the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God, who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. Then a voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thundering sang, Alleluia. And the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Now, omnipotent means all powerful. So, verse 7 Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. Now, I want to share something tonight about this word, uh, talks about the marriage. If we look back in Scripture, in uh, like the book of Matthew, when uh, it says Mary was going to be, uh, when she was betrothed to Joseph, and that she was pre she became pregnant with uh, uh, Jesus, the Holy Ghost came upon her and she became pregnant. But they weren't married yet, but they were engaged. Now there was something that happens uh, that in uh, the Jewish wed uh, when a Jewish couple is to be engaged. What happens is the couple goes down with their families, and this is a public, uh, like, uh, it's part of their engagement. What they do is they go down the river, and they both families go down there, and the couple gets engage, uh, gets baptized. And, the, and so when they come up out of the water, now the, the woman that's going to be married, she can do business in the name of her husband-to-be. She has legal rights. That's why Joseph was going to divorce her quietly, even though they weren't married yet. And so what happens is we see this, that uh, when uh, she was pregnant with, uh, when the Holy Ghost came upon her and she, was, she became pregnant, Joseph was going to divorce her because he didn't know what was going on. He just knew that his fiance was pregnant. But the angel of the Lord came and told him this is from God, and so uh, he married her. And uh, but uh, and so we as Christians, we are betrothed to the Lord, and so just like they did in their time, we are to be baptized. In so when we're baptized in the name of Jesus, now we can legally do business in the name of Jesus. That's why we get power. That's why the enemy does not want you to be baptized in the name of Jesus because something uh and this is a whole huge other uh study we can do later but i just want to point out here that it's talking about the marriage of the lamb and we are as his people we are commanded to be baptized in the name of jesus and so when we come out of the water now we can do uh, business in the name of jesus we have that authority and so this is just a little side note i wanted to share with you tonight about this uh marriage so, but we see here in verse seven, uh, it says, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. Okay, that's we, we have a responsibility to make herself ready to be, uh, to separate herself from the things of the world, to be baptized, to be 
filled with the Holy Ghost to live a life of righteousness and holiness. And God gives us that power through the Holy Ghost. Verse 8, And to her it was granted to be arrayed with fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Amen. Verse 9, Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell to, at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am a fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Now I, say, now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Now remember we talked earlier in uh, chapter uh, 4, it talks about the white horse, the, the four horsemen. And some people thought the first one, the white horse that they saw, was Jesus, but it's not. And so now we're going to see, and I, I mentioned back then that I was going to show you here that there is a time, and this is, this is actually we see Jesus here in verse 11. It says, Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So he has many crowns, which means the authority. Okay. He had a, a name written on him, uh, written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Now, to me, and I want to mention about this, it says his robe was dipped in blood. Now, what happens is when if a Jew back in Jesus' time, when they wear the, the uh, uh, every uh, male is giving, given the prayer shawl. And so what happens is if the, if the male is killed in battle or if he's murdered, they dip that, that, the, that uh, prayer shawl in the blood of the victim and because it's to, it is a sign of to have God that God would take vengeance upon their them being murdered. So we see here that this same thing is being uh, shown here in Scripture, verse thirteen, that his robe was dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God, and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So we see that this is Jesus in uh, his, his uh, coming back in uh, all his power and glory with the saints with him. Verse 17, then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and the armies, gathering together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive in the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded out of the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with the flesh. Now, what I want to share here with you that there's you have hell, which is Haiti or hell or Hades, but then also there's the lake of fire. Nobody is in the lake of fire now, but the first ones you see here that will be cast in the lake of fire is the beast and the false prophet. Okay, so that ends vision six, and so and that was what we saw. We saw Jesus as judge and conqueror. Now uh, we're going to go into verse uh, the seventh vision, starting in chapter twenty, and uh, 
So let's start there, chapter uh, 20, verse 1. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having a key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil, and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him. Just like what they, the Romans tried to do with Jesus, they tried to put him in a tomb and seal him up. Now we see that uh, this is happening to the enemy. Okay, so he's being sealed up for a thousand years uh, so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Verse four, and then I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was, was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshiped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. Now there are people right now in the in other parts of the world that are being persecuted going through tribulation because they are believers and they won't, they won't, uh, they won't uh, give up their faith in, in Jesus. And so we see here that there are, uh, we see here the martyrs, the people, even Paul was beheaded for the, the gospel. Now, I believe that as the world uh, goes into to more and more uh, tribulation towards the church, there will be where people will go through, uh, they will have to either reject Christ or in, in the gospel, or they will lose their life. And so, uh, but Jesus tells us to... To, to hold to our faith. Um, I always, uh, uh, I always believe uh, that uh, if they, like for me, or if they're going to do that to me, then they're threatening me with heaven. So I'm not worried about that, you know, because I'm ready to go and be with the Lord. And, and so, but uh, if we may, we, but if we do remain until we're caught up, that's okay too, because we have the victory in Jesus. Amen. Jesus gave us new life. He paid for the price. I don't have to live the old life that I used to live. I don't have to live in sin and bondage and, and torment. And now, but now I can live in, 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 even though the world has chaos in it, I can have a life of peace. I can have the, the presence of God, the peace of God, the joy of the Lord that is my strength. So the enemy, what's he going to threaten me with? Is he going to threaten me with heaven? That's fine. Take my head off. That's fine with me. I will go and be with the Lord. It doesn't matter because my life is in Christ Jesus. Amen. And uh, if you're a true believer and you, uh, you've accepted Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what the enemy does to us. It's it, what matters is what we are doing for Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, I just, I just rejoice that no matter what, nothing can separate me from the love of God. The enemy can't even, he can try to threaten me by taking my life, but my life is hidden in Christ Jesus. So it's, uh, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, because Paul said, absent from the body, present with the Lord. So, uh, you know, all he can do is, the enemy can do is threaten us with heaven. So let's read this a little more. Uh, let's see, uh, verse, well, uh, let's see. Yeah, verse 4 again. Then I saw thrones in them, sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who is part of the first resurrection. Amen. So you want to be a part of the first res res resurrection, not the second. Okay. That is when they do, when the, we, the, well, we'll, we'll read that and, we'll, and I'll show you what that is. Blessed and holy is he who is part of the first resurrection over such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Verse seven. 
Now when the thousand years will have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle whose number is as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and, and the beloved city, which will be the, in Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Verse 11, the final judgment. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to the works, to their works by the things which are written in the books. Now I want to share with you what these books are. The, the books that were opened is the 66 books of the Bible, the Word of God. Because Jesus said in the Gospel of John, he says, I won't judge you, but my word will judge you. So uh, what will happen is these who reject Jesus Christ, uh, they, the, these will come before the white throne of judgment. Now there's only one throne. And those who are saved, those who accepted Jesus Christ and are filled with the Holy Ghost, been baptized in Jesus' name, the, the throne of God is to us is the throne of grace. We, that's why it says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Okay? But that same throne becomes the throne of judgment to those who have rejected Christ, who does, who does not want to receive the gift of eternal life that Jesus paid for. And so now that throne of grace becomes the throne of judgment, okay? Because we saw in the beginning of this study that John, when he was taken up in chapter 4, verse 1, he said he saw a throne. And so that throne is either the throne of grace to the believer or it is the throne of judgment to the non-believer. And so uh, what will happen is those who are not found... Uh, those whose names are not written in the book of life, they will come by the throne, before the white throne of judgment, and these books will be opened, which are the 66 bo books of the Bible, and also the, uh, the book of life. And it says those, uh, and they will be judged by their, by their deeds, by their works, by, according to what's in the books. And so we will be judged by the word of God. So... That's what uh, Jesus was saying in the Gospel of John, that my word will judge you, okay? Uh, verse 13, it says, The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And then they were judged, each one according to his works. Now, what I want to share here, uh, when you're in Christ, when you're a believer in Christ, you're part of the body of Christ, okay? Jesus is the head, and the church is the body. Okay, now we see here, it says, it talks about Hades, death and Hades. Well, Hades, or another, another word for it is hell. Hell, or Hades, is the body of unbelievers. So, it says that death and Hades will be, will be brought up, okay, those who are in them. And then it says they will be cast in the lake of fire. So, those who are non-believers, those who do, uh, reject the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, that are not in the uh, Lamb's Book of Life, they are part of the body of unbelievers, which is the Hades or hell. Okay, So uh, when you die, you're going to either be part of the body of Christ or you're going to be part of the body of Hades or hell. And you and Jesus is the head of the body, of, which is the church, and the devil is the head of the body of Hades or the body of unbelievers. And it says they, that Hades will, will be cast in the lake of fire. So... You don't want to be part of the body of hell so or Hades. You want to be in Christ Jesus. Okay. Uh, it says here, verse 14, the second part, This is the second death, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. So uh, if you reject Jesus Christ, and you, uh, there is only one place you'll end up, and that is in the lake of fire. 
So, okay, verse 21. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And I want to share something here. That when we, when this happens and people, the things on earth will become like a far distant memory. It will be like the things with the things we suffered, the pain, because heaven will be so great. It will be such a. Uh, it says it has not even entered in the mind of the of what God has prepared for those who love Him. So, uh, the things that happen in this life, the the pain, the sufferings we go through, Paul says it won't even compare to what we're going to be be uh, seeing or be a part of in heaven. So uh, some things, sometimes it seems things are hard here. But just remember, this, it is just temporal. It's just, no matter what you're going through, it's just temporal. This, when we get to heaven, this is for eternity. So uh, this will become a far distant memory, if you, if you would. So uh, verse 5. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my, my son. So God does not show partiality. It is for whoever. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price to redeem the whole world to himself. Okay? So all we have to do is accept it. All we have to do is say, yes, Lord, this is what I want. And we just have to do uh, our part by repenting, be baptized in the name of Jesus so that we can be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's for anyone who wants it. Okay? God shows no favoritism. There's no race there's no race issue with God. There's no, you know, we have all this race issue going on. Well, with God, there is no race issue. It's either you're saved or you're lost. Either you're in Christ or you're in the devil or in, in, in darkness. So uh, God says this is for anyone who wants to come. Jesus paid the price so that anyone can be saved. If you're breathing, then you can be saved. It doesn't matter how far you've gone from God what you've been into, none of that takes God by surprise. Amen? So God, Jesus has paid the price that you can receive uh, the gift of eternal life. Amen? And we just have to obey the word of God. Acts 2.38, we need to repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, that we may, that we may uh, uh, for the remission of our sins, and that we, we be, that we may be filled with the Holy Ghost. And this is for anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord. So, uh, just want to encourage you if you're if you're thinking that well God loves them but not me that is that's a lie God paid the price to, so that the whole world can be saved amen okay verse 8 but the cowardly the unbelieving the abominable the murderous sexual immoral sorcerers idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, if we don't accept Jesus Christ, then uh, we will be in, we will go to the second death, which is in, uh, when we will have our part in the lake of fire. And that's something you don't want to be. So, uh, Verse 9, then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues, plagues came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, 
and I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away into the Spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So the, this city has uh, 12 gates, three on each side, and they all have the names of the tribe of Israel on the gates. Now watch this. I want to, uh, verse 14. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Now, I want to show you something. The foundation of, of the kingdom of God, the foundation of the New Jerusalem, is has the names of the apostles, the 12 apostles. Now, we know Paul became, Paul talks about being grafted in later on as being, because Judas sinned and Judas uh, became the son of perdition. And later on, Paul God picked Paul, so Paul was the 12th. Uh, and so these, uh, the kingdom of God, the, the new Jerusalem, her foundation is, the, is of the 12 apostles, the name of the 12 apostles. And the reason is because the, the new Jerusalem or the kingdom of God, if you would, the foundation of that kingdom is the apostles' doctrine. That's the, tr the foundation of God's kingdom. And so it's very important that we need to be, we need to go back to the apostles what the, in the book of Acts and what did they teach? Because Paul said, if anyone teaches any other doctrine than what you've been taught, which was by the apostles, then it's a doctrine of demons, which that's where we get the Babylonian uh, doctrine, which is a Trinity type doctrine, which is not the, the word of God. So we need to be have the foundation of God, the foundation of his kingdom is the apostles doctrine. So it's very important that we understand that. So verse 15 and he and he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates and its wall. The city is laid out as a square, its length is as great as its breadth, and it's measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. Its length breadth and height are equal just like if you would the 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 holy of holies was the same width width uh depth width and height it's a cube it's the same thing here we're seeing is a cube okay the holy of holies being in the presence of god okay that's what we're seeing here verse 17 then he measured its wall 140 cubits according to the measure of a man that is an, of an angel the construction of its wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedon, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, ser the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth barrel, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysop, chrysopris, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelfth gates were twelve pearls, which individual gates was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need for the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminates it. The Lamb is the light, uh, is its light, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and the honor unto it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall be no means there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Chapter twenty two. 
And then he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of the street, on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruit, fruits, each fruit tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no, no night there. They need no lamp nor lights for, for the sun. The Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants all the, the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of this prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. When I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who keep the words of, the, of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal the words of this prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to every one according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers, and sexual immoral, and murderers, and idolaters, and whoever loves and practices the lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Now I want to show you something here, what Jesus said. He said here, I am the root and the offspring of David. Now there's something very important to understand in that. David, the root of David, if you follow his lineage back, clear back to Adam, of course we know God is the source of life. So the root is the source, is where the, and so that's why he says, I'm the root and the offspring of David. So not only was Jesus the root of David, he's also the offspring of David. And so what you have here is you have deity, which is God creating. And we see that in the beginning, God creates, which is his deity. And then later on, through David's lineage comes the Messiah, which is now Jesus' humanity. So that is the offspring of David. So, but Jesus says, I, I am the root and the offspring of David. So you have deity and humanity. And so when Jesus walked upon the earth, he, as a man, he spoke as a man and he also spoke as God. And he can do both with the, and uh, because he was, he was both deity and and humanity and so uh, when Jesus went to the cross uh, it says that uh, um, when he gave up the ghost and he died of course we know deity cannot die so his deity is what parted and his humanity is what died on the cross the the man that because the law said that if you're sold into slavery only your brother can redeem you so God whose deity had to become our brother. And that's how, that's why through the lineage of David and Mary, uh, the Holy Ghost uh, coming upon Mary the, at the Holy Conception was the beginning of the humanity of Jesus. That's why the Bible calls him the begotten son, not the eternal son. That's a Trinity doctrine, uh, which is not true. The, Jesus' humanity is not eternal. It began at the Holy Conception. Okay, so... We see here, he says, I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Verse 17, and the spirit and the bride say, come and let him who hears say, come and let him who thirsts come. 
Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. So this is for anyone who desires to have eternal life, to live. Well, actually, we're going to live forever. It's either going to be in life or in death. And you want to make sure that you, you come. That's why Jesus is saying come. The Spirit is saying come. Whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. Verse 18, for I testify to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in the, this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Now I want to share with you, there are many religions that have taken away or they've added to the book. And this is a stern warning that if you take away or if you, if you add to it or take away, then you will be, uh, there will be punishment. And so I would ask you, study the word. If you're in a different denomination, study what your denominations teaches. And if they add or take away from the word of God, I would get out of there. I grew up in a, in a, in a false religion. And they took and they added and, they, and then they took away things from the word of God. And so uh, uh, there are people in my family have died and they've, they've uh, believed this false religion. And I know that they will not be in heaven because they did not believe the word of God. And so they believed man's doctrine, not the word. So be careful. Don't just sit in a church and say, well, this is what my pastor says. You need to study the word. Study to show yourself approved. Amen. Uh, verse 20, and he who testifies these things says, surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So that's the end of the book of Revelation. Uh, we uh, did it in six parts. I've it went a little faster than I anticipated. So uh, I want to thank you for being with us on this uh, Bible study. If you have any questions, please contact the church. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, if you desire that uh, maybe there, you want to, you, you don't know the Lord. If you want to give your life to the Lord, if you want to, please contact Tabernacle of Salem. We will be happy to get a hold of you and uh, help you in any way we can. Any questions you have, may have about the Word of God, we're here to be a blessing to you. We're here to help you. And we're here to help you in your walk with the Lord, that you would know the word of God. Amen. That you would be, that the word of God would come and, and uh, uh, do what it does and set you free. Amen. So uh, I want to thank you again for being part of this Bible study. I hope you get some, uh, it's been a blessing to you. It's been a blessing to me to, to bring this to you. And so uh, again, we want to thank you for being a part of this. And uh, please contact Tabernacle Salem if you have any questions. And uh, we love you, and we thank you for being part of this Bible study. And we ask, we want you to be blessed in the in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Amen.